When the name John Hughes is mentioned, many people think of his teen films like The Breakfast Club or Pretty in Pink. But as with most prolific filmmakers, Hughes transitioned through a few different creative periods throughout his career. After the completion of his teen canon with Ferris Bueller's Day Off in 1986, and Some Kind of Wonderful in 1987, Hughes moved away from telling teen features to stories showcasing adults as protagonists. It is also worth noting that Hughes often wrote and produced many films which he did not direct. However, his influence can still be felt in these movies. Such films include Career Opportunities and The Great Outdoors. In kicking off the Hughes reviews as well as the Thanksgiving holiday, I wanted to take a look at an often overlooked Thanksgiving movie, Dutch, 1991, directed by Peter Feynman. At the start of the film, we are introduced to Dutch Dooley, played by Ed O'Neill. O'Neill is probably best known for playing hapless loser Al Bundy in the long-running TV comedy Married with Children, and lately of TV's Modern Family. Dutch is at a dinner party with his girlfriend Natalie. Natalie is recently divorced, and in the intro scene we find her talking to some of the other members of the country club. Already we see that the people at the party are elitist and unwelcoming of her and her new boyfriend. Natalie soon sees her ex-husband Reed, played by prick character actor Christopher McDonald. Reed tells her that he won't be picking up their son for Thanksgiving, lording his position over her and using their son as leverage. We are soon introduced to Doyle, Natalie and Reed's son, played by a young Ethan Embry, probably best known for his lead part in the 90s teen flick Can't Hardly Wait. Doyle is at his prep school in Georgia, and it becomes clear in moments that Doyle is loathed by his fellow schoolmates for his elitist attitudes. Doyle has no friends and seems as though he prefers it that way. In a short phone conversation with his mother, it becomes clear that Doyle blames her for his parents' divorce and is unhappy with having to spend the holiday season with his mother. Wanting to make a good impression on the woman he loves, Dutch volunteers to pick the boy up at his prep school in Georgia and drive him back to Chicago for the holiday. Within the first few moments of the film, we have a clear impression of who our characters are. Dutch is a blue-collar, take-no-bullshit kind of guy, and Doyle is the young, entitled, rich kid. If this scenario sounds cliché, that's because it is. Movie audiences have been treated to this dynamic before. The question is, does Dutch do anything new with it? Answer? Not really. These two characters are so different that they complement each other, and that's precisely what makes their relationship so much fun to watch. The hilarious physical altercations and verbal barbs are the comedic candy shell to something deeper underneath. Doyle's soured relationship with his parents and his perverted view of social class has made him a bit of a monster, and that's precisely the theme that drives the film. This is no surprise, since Hughes has used the topic of social class in his films before. It could be said that The Breakfast Club and Pretty in Pink are all about social class, but in Dutch, the filmmakers seem to widen their gaze beyond the halls of high school and into the larger world. We see Dutch as the archetypal blue-collar guy and Doyle as the representation of upper-class entitlement. But on the road trip, both our protagonist and their audience are exposed to everything in between. One scene in particular has our heroes get mistaken for a homeless father and son. This is an experience that Doyle has never had, thus leaving an undeniable impression on him. The two companions then have to stay in a shelter for the night and hitch a ride with a homeless family into Chicago the next morning. This gives the film a real sense of America and its people, which leads me to my next topic. Dutch, like Planes, Trains, and Automobiles, is a road film, and this is a genre of film that has distinctly American roots. Since we have highway from sea to shining sea, and our country to some degree was founded on manifest destiny, this aspect of our culture can be seen keenly in many of our movies. We've seen the road story in such literary classics as Huckleberry Finn and On the Road, and this similar tale has continued in such classics of film as Sullivan's Travels and The Searchers. The road film is a genre that expresses physically an emotional journey. Every encounter our hero has illustrates a lesson. This is very clearly represented in Dutch. While both characters learn from the experience of being on the road, we get the sense that Dutch has made this trip before, and it is actually Doyle who changes the most. This fits well onto the topic of Thanksgiving, a holiday meant to commemorate giving thanks for what we have. Watching Doyle go through his journey, he learns that life isn't as easy for everyone else as it is for him. This film is considered by many to be one of Hughes' lesser works, and it is difficult to argue that it doesn't retread some of the same ground covered in planes, trains, and automobiles. However, road trip and Thanksgiving aside, the two have very different tones in both drama and comedy. This is a kind of father-son story, and we go along for the ride as Dutch tries to bond with Doyle and make him into a man or at least not such a little shitbag. 
The characters fight endlessly and find themselves in several painful and awkward situations. From physically fighting each other to getting robbed by homebound hookers, it's enjoyable to see the two work together and against each other during each of their adventures. The comedy in this film is good, however there are some times you get the feeling that the director is relying too much on the page and not enough on timing and build-up. Fortunately, O'Neill and Embry are fantastic in their parts and make each scene entertaining to watch. If you haven't seen this film before, I highly recommend it. It hits all the right notes, even if the timing is a bit off. And the two leads serve up a wonderful mix of drama and comedy in wonderfully high-stakes scenes. Dutch Stands on its own is an often overlooked comedic gem, but can also serve as a companion piece to the more well-known planes, trains, and automobiles. Thank you.